Okay. So, um, so far you've been studying functions, uh, mostly in the forms of lines, and occasionally you've been doing um, x squared, so you've been doing parabolas. Um, but you've only been studying things on the xy plane. And so now we're going to introduce you to the relationship between a triangle and a circle. We're going to relate that to um, all conic sections because a circle is just a special case of a conic section. So we're going to relate all of those together. But first we're going to start out with how do you get a circle using Pythagorean theorem? So we start out with a triangle. Uh, recall from Pythagorean theorem that when you have a triangle, the hypotenuse of the triangle is going to be equal to the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. So simply said, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now we recall this from Pythagorean theorem. Again, I've marked the color so you can see that the hypotenuse is green. Um, the B coordinate is the Y coordinate, and the A coordinate is the X coordinate. So you can clearly see where everything is. But what does this have to do with a circle and the equation for a circle? Well, for one thing, I want to remind you that a circle, because it closes in on itself, is not a function. It is actually a relationship between two functions between x squared and y squared. Because if you keep on going exponential along a point, eventually you'll turn back in on itself. And we'll explore that. But first, let's suggest that this hypotenuse here is actually the radius of a circle. Okay? So what would that look like if a circle was to encompass this and it was of radius c? Let's see what that looks like. So, the one thing that we know about circles is that no matter where you go along the circle, if you have the focus in the very middle, you have the center, you know that the radius is always going to be exactly the same. So, the quickest way to draw a circle is to use a piece of string and just start it out with the radius where it's supposed to be and keep on going along. And not the best circle I've ever drawn, but certainly not the worst. And you can see that no matter where you are on this circle, the radius is always going to be the same. It's always going to be equal to C. So, now that we know that we've got a C over here and that this right here is the equation for this line over here, we can say, well, if that's c, if that's equal to c, then this is equal to c over here as well. And so is this, all the way over here. Okay? So how do we get the equation that goes along this line all the way? Well, we can relate it to that c that we have. And we can relate it to the fact that we have at least what this is right over here. Okay? The a and the b. So, <clears throat> I'm going to say that this can be turned into, number one, we're going to take, number one, we're going to take a squared plus b squared. And we're going to say that it's equal to the radius squared, because indeed, in this case, c is equal to r. From there, we're going to divide the entire equation by the radius. So we're going to take r squared, okay, and we're going to divide everything, okay? You can divide this, okay? And recall from distributive properties, you can actually end up having 
a squared over r squared plus b squared over r squared. And what is this equal to? That's equal to 1. This describes your first relationship of a circle. In this case, you have the relationship of the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, and certainly we can replace those and say that this is x. And that's why. And now you have a full equation for a circle. When does this equation for a circle become an ellipse? Well, an ellipse is basically a squished circle. Or you could also say that a circle is a special case of an ellipse where its eccentricity is zero. So, what does that tell us? These radii over here, these two underneath, in the case of a circle, they're exactly the same. But what if we were to squish this circle? Well, then these radii would be different, right? So, let's say we squish, um, let's say we squish the y-axis and we elongate the x-axis, and let's see what happens. So we're going to elongate the x-axis. We're going to say that the radius is out over here. And we're going to squish the y-axis. And we're going to say that the radius instead is down over here. Well, if you connect all of those together, what you end up with is an ellipse. So again, let's remember that if these two are exactly the same, it is a circle. However, if this coordinate right here is different, we can say that this is R1 and this is R2, then this becomes an ellipse or an oval. And the radius of the x-coordinate is this and the radius of the y-coordinate is this. Okay, and we're done. And see. <laughs>